After a string of hits in the 1980s and the early 90s in his native China, with such films as A Better Tomorrow, The Killer and Hard Boiled, acclaimed director John Woo was invited to come to Hollywood to make his first English language film in 1993. Woo's unique style, particularly in the shooting of action scenes, was fresh and exciting. The Criterion Collection referred to his work as violence as poetry, and his two-gun slow-motion shootouts, Mexican standoffs, and other stylistic touches have since been imitated and referenced in Western cinema by many other filmmakers, with such wooisms evident in films like Reservoir Dogs and The Matrix, to name but two examples. By the time Hard Boiled was released, John Woo was already established as a respected auteur of world cinema. But his transition to Hollywood was less than smooth, and it is perhaps fair to say that Wu was not handed the respect that someone of his standing should have been. In this episode of Cutting Edge, we'll be taking a look at the issues Wu encountered during the making of his first American film, Hard Target, in 1993. After The Killer had become something of a cult hit in the United States, it wasn't long before Hollywood came calling. Tom Pollock, the chairman of Universal Pictures, had seen the film and had been impressed, and following Wu's completion of Hard Boiled in Hong Kong in 1992, Pollock offered Wu a chance to work in the United States. Shockingly, Universal was not keen to have Wu direct a full-length feature film, as they felt that his limited command of the English language would cause problems on a film set so Universal insisted on hiring director Sam Raimi as an executive producer on the film, feeling he could step in and take over directing duties if Wu was not up to the job. Things were already off to a bad start. Wu was offered several scripts, but eventually settled on Chuck Farrer's hard target. Jean-Claude Van Damme was cast in the lead role of Chance Boudreau, with Lance Henriksen on board as the villain Emile Fouchon. Both actors were already big fans of John Woo and relished the chance to work with him. After a tight shooting schedule, the editing process began. The first rough cut of the film was over two hours long, with a 116-minute test screener created after further refinements. These two work print versions are available unofficially in trading circles, and the 116-minute cut, which is time-coded and features a temp score, rough sound effects mix and no ADR work, is often mistakenly referred to as being Wu's director's cut. Further cuts for timing and pacing issues were made, and some additional reshoots were also undertaken. One such example is the final confrontation between Boudreau and Fouchon, with the reshoots incorporating more martial arts fighting in order to cater to Van Damme's established fan base. A final release version was eventually created that ran for around 99 minutes, and it was around this time that Hard Target was submitted to the MPAA for a rating. Wu was contracted to deliver an R-rated picture, but after a while the MPAA came back with their decision. Wu was handed an NC-17 rating. The MPAA declined to cite which specific scenes were problematic in order to avoid the ratings board being accused of censorship. Regardless, Wu and his editors made cuts, and the film was resubmitted to the MPAA, but it once again came back with an NC-17 rating. Sources differ on how many times Hard Target went back to the MPAA for an R rating, but the general consensus is that the film was submitted six or seven times before an R rating was granted, with around four minutes of footage having been removed for its final US release print. To begin with, the opening credit sequence, with writer Chuck Farrer playing the ill-fated Douglas Binder, received some minor cuts for violence, but Wu also re-edited other parts of the scene, using alternate footage for reasons unknown. These changes shown here do not appear to have been undertaken for censorship reasons, as the alternate shots do not feature any contentious material, so we will not be discussing them. However, we will cite some violent shots that differ between the R-rated version and the uncut 99-minute version of the film, which we'll be referring to as the NC-17 version for ease. Firstly, footage that shows Binder trying to painfully remove an arrow from his shoulder was reduced. After he succeeds... Binder uses an exploding gas canister to dispatch two enemies that are hunting him. The original material in the NC-17 version plays as follows, with the R-rated version playing immediately afterwards. You're firing too close! 
Moments later, Binder was originally seen to be struck by three arrows, one in his shoulder, one in his leg, and a final arrow that enters through his back and emerges out of his chest which kills him. The NC-17 version plays as follows. In the R version, Binder is seen being struck by only two arrows, with sight of the second hitting his leg being excised entirely. Some alternative shots were used to hide the offending footage in the R version, but an ugly continuity error is now present thanks to these changes. As Binder falls through the pier in the R version, the arrow in his leg is clearly visible, despite us not seeing it ever being fired due to the MPAA cuts. Another trim made as the third arrow strikes Binder has the annoying effect of removing one of Wu's trademark freeze frame shots, and the final shot of Binder's body drifting downstream was also removed entirely. No other MPAA changes occur until the gloriously over the top showdown in the Mardi Gras graveyard. Although the MPAA did not give explicit notes on what was to be removed, it would appear that the sheer amount of heavy gunfire and bloody impact shots into bodies were the key factors in the ratings board awarding an NC-17 rating. As with the opening scene, some cuts appear to have been made for stylistic reasons rather than sensorial ones. Some cuts made during the editing process remove the sight of Boudreaux performing somersaults, as well as some shots showing general gunfire directed to camera. With regards to censorship changes, the first alterations occur as Duvet and Natasha arrive at the warehouse in order to help out Boudreaux. In the rest of the following comparisons, we'll be showing the R-rated versions first, followed by the NC-17 versions, as we feel this better demonstrates the drastic changes that Wu was forced to undertake. To begin with, Check out the following clip of Boudreaux dispatching an enemy in the R-rated version. This is John Woo's original version of the same scene, which is more than a little different to say the least.
Sorry about the shirt. Oh, give it a rest, pal. <laughs> The next cuts occur as Duvet and Natasha engage some of Fouchon's men. Again the R version plays first. Notice the insert shot of the pigeons that was lifted from the previous scene and reinserted here in order to cover some violent footage. The NC-17 version follows afterwards. Seconds later, more changes occur as Boudreaux shoots another enemy whilst hanging from a rope and Duvet is shot in the leg. More cuts follow immediately afterwards as Boudreaux shoots at some of Fouchon's men. Compare the R version with the NC-17 version. As Boudreaux ploughs his way through more enemies with Van Cleef hot on his tail, further reductions were made to blood spurts as Boudreaux shoots at two more enemies. Look closely at the following clips.
Perhaps the most drastic changes occur as Boudreaux whittles down the last of Fouchon's men, before taking out Van Cleef in a show-stopping death scene. The R-rated version of the film plays as follows. Numerous changes were made to this sequence, reducing the amount of gunfire exchanged between Boudreaux and Van Cleef. The bloody impact into the grenade-wielding enemy who was shot through the window. The henchman being shot repeatedly in the stomach and groin. The huge amount of bloody impact shots into Van Cleef's body. And the length of time Van Cleef takes to die after being riddled with bullets. A small cut occurs a short while afterwards, when the last henchman is killed with a shotgun blast. The next MPAA change occurs during the fight between Boudreaux and Fouchon, beginning with the removal of the close-up impact shot into Fouchon's shoulder.
the final cut for violence sees Fouchon spitting blood after being kicked in the chest. After Hard Target was finally awarded its R rating, the film did well at the box office and was the second highest grossing film the week of its release in the United States. It made just over $74 million at the worldwide box office, which is about $121 million in today's money. However, Wu found his initial experience of working in Hollywood and the MPAA ratings process to be a somewhat frustrating experience, as he recounted in an interview with Vibe magazine in October 1993. There are so many politics and games and egos here, I just haven't gotten used to the studio system. In Hong Kong, I have more freedom. Here, we also have to be concerned about the ratings. I need to tone down a lot of the violence. Well, everything has to be toned down. It is disappointing that a respected international visionary like John Wu was not given the proper treatment at the hands of the Hollywood studio system when he emigrated to the United States, particularly as Hard Target was his first American film. What is the sense in hiring a respected international director for his shooting style, only to water it down for Western audiences? John Woo's directorial finesse would go on to be similarly muted with the release of his 1996 action film Broken Arrow, although he was afforded far more flexibility and control when he made Face Off for Paramount Pictures in 1997, with actor Michael Douglas serving as an executive producer. The NC-17 version of Hard Target was never released on VHS or DVD in the United States, although it was released intact on those formats in many major territories around the world. The good news is that fans of the film in the United States can pick up the film uncut on Blu-ray. Although an individual release was not on sale in the United States at the time this episode was made, the NC-17 version of Hard Target is available in the Van Damme 5 movie action pack. Alternatively, American fans can import the Region A Hong Kong Blu-ray or the Region Free UK Blu-ray, both of which are fully uncut and will play on all American Blu-ray players without issue. It would be nice to think that John Woo one day gets to release a true director's cut of Hard Target, Although it is a rough work print, the 116 minute cut of the film is pure John Woo. Featuring far more of his trademark touches and editing style, it is a more daring and much more involving version of the film that bests even the 99 minute NC-17 version, with more action sequences and storyline development. Failing all else, at least fans have access to an extended version in high definition without any MPAA cuts, which thankfully beats the R-rated version in every respect. It has been five years since the fire. And even cleaning up this mess is impossible. You never want to shop here after everything has happened. Ah! This is serious. There's going to be windows and mirrors wherever you go. Anything that causes a reflection right now is dangerous. Ah! 